Namaskar. In this video lecture, I'm going to talk about a topic called self-incompatibility. It's a process that occurs in angiosperms, that is the flowering plants, where we see that the, the pollen of the flower is unable to fertilize the egg of the same flower or the flower on the other branch on the same plant. So basically, it's a process of uh, uh, preventing self-fertilization, or you can say inbreeding, and promoting uh, outbreeding or cross-fertilization. It's not visible from the outside morphologically, the flower is a bisexual flower, or the plant is monoecious. So apparently, it seems that self-fertilization will occur. But because of some biochemical factor that we will talk about, what is that? the self fertilization is inhibited somehow and if you talk about how many plants do follow this kind of uh, characteristics then we will see that there are about more than 60 percent of the plants angiosperms and belonging to about 70 families of uh, angiosperms uh, they have adopted this mechanism through evolution and possibly because outbreeding is beneficial for these plants because outbreeding introduces uh, variance, genetic variance in the, um, in, in the species, in the population, and that is helpful for adaptability of the plant as far as the adaptation of the plant in the environment is concerned. Now talking about the types of uh, self-incompatibility, broadly there can be two categories. One is heteromorphic, the other is homomorphic. As the name suggests, heteromorphic means the morphologically the flowers have, are different. And homomorphic means the morphologically flowers are same. In most of the cases we'll have homomorphic, that is the flowers, the structure of this, uh, the stem, stamen or the pistil uh, will be same. But in case of heteromorphic, uh, self incompatibility the length of the pistil is different here we find two conditions diastyle and tristyle uh, and it has been said that the, because of the variation in the length of the of the pistil uh, it is fertilized only by the by the uh, pollen coming from the anther which is at the same level so if that is true uh, why not the, the anther that is sitting above the stigma of a flower, that is in the thrum flower, where the pistil is shorter, we call that flower as a thrum flower, and where the pistil is longer, we call that a pin flower. In case of at least you see in thrum flower, the anther is sitting above the stigma. So when pollen will, uh, will be dehisced, it, it can automatically fall on the stigma by gravity but it does not fertilize it. So scientists believe that this is because uh, they are not at the same level, but that is not the question. That has to fall on the stigma. So there must be some internal factor which is inhibiting from pollination to occur. Not pollination, rather pollen tube growth and leading to fertilization to occur. S same will be the case with the tristyle. So what is that mechanism? That is, uh, that has been explained by S allele uh, mechan S, S allele factor that is involved in, in self incompatibility. We'll see it little uh, later. In case of homomorphic uh, self incompatibility, as I mentioned, that there are more than 60% of the flowering plants belong to this category, and they are uh, in they fall in 70% of the families. And they, there are two types of that, GSI and SSI. That means the gametophytic self-incompatibility and sporophytic self-incompatibility. Historically, if you talk, uh, it was called Reuter who first observed this phenomena in, uh, in Barbascum phoenicium, uh, a plant from Scrophulariaceae family way back in 1763. Then after Darwin in during 1876-77, he studied this in, in a little bit uh, elaborate manner, and he established this uh, as an outbreeding process. Later in 1917, uh, the term self 
but self uh, incompatibility this term was introduced by stout and then in 1925 the gametophytic self in the s allele uh, concept that opposition s allele concept developed and it was given by um, east and mangels uh, depending on their studies on Nico, uh, on nicotiana sandari a solanaceous family plant later on in 1950 uh, it were uh, huggers and babcock who studied in uh, in a compositive family an asteraceae family plant called crepis foetida uh, and they are, they are also found that the S allele is uh, the opposition S allele is working there, but that is being determined by this sporophytic plant. So that is that is called sporophytic self incompatibility. In the same year, Gulstel. Uh, he studied in uh, Parthenium uh, Argensium plant, the, another plant in Asteraceae family, and there he also found the opposition S allele working there. Later on, in 1955, Batman also studied in Brassicaceae family in details, and the process was established. So as far as the site of incompatibility reaction is concerned, there have been different sites. It is stopped at the stigma level, uh, or it may grow, the pollen tube formation may occur. If it occurs, it might be stopped at the very beginning, or it will move to the, you know, in the styler region. It can reach to the, uh, even to the ovarian wall, and there uh, it can be inhibited. Uh, the, pol the pollen tube might burst open there, uh, or it may, even in certain cases, it has, it has, it has been found that the, um, the uh, egg has been fertilized, but that resulted into abortive embryo. So the net result is this, that the seed state does not occur. Wherever the inhibition occurs, in most of the cases, inhibition occurs uh, on the stigma and when the pollen tube has reached one, one third of the styler length. So these are the sites that there must be something in the pistil and the stigma which is stopping this, the pollen tube growth. That is being true by seeing these phenomena. Then S allele concept was uh, given uh, regarding self incompatibility, which says that uh, there are uh, the self in incompatibility is governed by the the uh, kind of an allele called S allele, uh, which is a multiple allele, and there are different situations in heteromorphic plants. Uh, the S allele is is a single locus uh, uh, biallelic biallelic control is there. There are there is a dominant S allele and there is a recessive S allele, only that work over there. In case of a homomorphic plants, there are situations where uh, the S allele is uh, unifactorial or a single locus with multiple alleles, uh, S allele with bifactorial, I mean there are two loci, uh, of not only of S allele, there are the S allele and Z allele, which both of which work in uh, are multi multiple alleles. A combination of them uh, has to occur for compatibility to take place. Similarly, there are polyfactorial where S, Z, and other three to four alleles, multiple alleles, uh, different alleles that those are segregating alleles, uh, not S allele. S allele itself is in multi uh, multiple allele. They are just like that Z allele. Z allele is, is also in multiple allele uh, uh, factor. Similarly, there are other alleles involved in three factor and four factor uh, factorial S allele uh, regulation of self incompatibility. So this is quite. Uh, complex plant system have developed such a kind of a uh, self incompatibility to to encourage the cross pollination or cross fertilization within them Opposition S allele hypothesis was, as I mentioned, was proposed by East and Mangelsdorf in 1925. Uh, according to this, what they say that the, the, if the pistillar and the, the pollen S allele, if they, they are identical, there will be no uh, pollen tube formation. There will be no compatibility. Incompatibility will occur. And if there is a difference between the S allele of the pollen and the pistil, then only compatibility will take place. Then only the pollen will be able to form pollen tube and fertilize the egg. So this is what is opposition. When the alleles will be opposite to each other, then uh, fertilization will occur. Otherwise not. This is what is the opposition S allele concept says. Uh, 
So on this basis, two types of phenomena, two types of plants have been observed. Uh, in one case, the, the S allele phenotype uh, that is being expressed either in the pistil or in the pollen, uh, particularly S allele phenotype of the pollen, if that is being determined at the gametophytic stage, that is after the microspore formation, then that will be called gametophytic self incompatibility. And if that uh, S allele phenotype is being controlled by or determined by uh, the mother plant, that is either the, the pollen mother cell when it was at in deployed condition or some other cell like the tapetum, uh, which is a nutritive tissue, which is known to contribute to the S allele phenotype in case of uh, sporophytic self incompatibility. So as the name suggests, uh, in case of sporophytic self incompatibility, the sporophytic plant, that is the mother plant, contributes to the, to the S allele phenotype of the pollen. Now let us see how the S allele, opposition S allele hypothesis works in case of GSI and SSI. In case of gametophytic self incompatibility, uh, what happens is uh, if the pollen S allele is uh, different from the any of the pollen S allele. These S alleles of the pollen are single allele because they have they are determined uh, at the level of microspore formation. So the, uh, there is that is haploid cell. So definitely the whatever S phenotype is present uh, that has come from a haploid uh, that means a single S allele. So here there will be no dominance or dissociation. If that uh, co-dominance usually occurs and some of the S alleles are dominant, some of the S alleles are recessive. So if here we have considered all the dominant uh, S alleles that pollen have fallen on, on the stigma, if the pollen has the S allele different from the pistil, then it will be able to form pollen tube in case of GSI. Okay, whatever, uh, I mean, if the pistil is say S1, S2 and the pollen is S1 and S2, there will be no pollen tube formation because uh, the both are similar, identical. So there will be rejection, 100% incompatibility will take place. In case of uh, the other condition uh, where uh, one of the pollen that uh, S3 is different from the pistillar uh, S allele composition, S1 and S2. So here S1 pollen will not be able to form pollen tube, but S3 will be able to form pollen tube. So partial incompatibility will be seen in this case. Whereas uh, if the pollens are completely different, S3 and S4, uh, with respect to the pistil, that is S1 and S2, it may be S5 or S6, whatever, uh, then also the, pollen, the fertilization or pollen tube formation leading to fertilization will occur. So in case of GSI, we find three situations. So either 100% incompatibility, it may be partial incompatibility, or it may be 100% compatibility. But if you talk about the sporophyte self incompatibility uh, we see that we can find that even uh, here the pollens uh, that are present they bear the S phenotype this S phenotype is determined by the sporophytic plant the mother plant that means it will have uh, effect of both the alleles that are present in the mother mother plant or tapetal cell because that is deployed that is having both the alleles in their homologous uh, chromosomes so the effect of both the alleles will come on the on the pollen wall because this is basically dependent on the s allele they produce proteins so those proteins, the male determinant of S allele is basically a protein. So that protein, if it is expressed uh, during sporophytic stage, it will be present, uh, both the alleles effect will be there on the pollen wall. So here, uh, if one of the allele is dominant over the other, the effect of the dominant allele will only be considered. So that's why if even, uh, this is quite normal that if the pistillar S allele composition completely matches the pollen S allele composition there, there will be hundred percent incompatibility the first case but the second case where one of the allele is uh, not similar to the pistillar S allele then also there will be a rejection because here S1 is dominant over S3 so the S3 phenotype is also similar to S1 phenotype that's why uh, there is no partial incompatibility sort of thing in case of uh, uh, sporophytic self incompatibility if it is completely 
completely different if the pollen uh, SLL composition is completely different from that of the uh, pistiller, then only 100% um, compatibility will occur. So there are two situations only. Either there will be 100% compatibility or there will be 100% incompatibility in case of uh, sporophytic self incompatibility. So now let's move. Up to this, this was a, a classical portion, and then we will now talk about uh, what is the molecular mechanism behind uh, these things. How it is being, the, what is the interaction, pistil, pollen, uh, pollen tube uh, interaction that is occurring either at the stigma surface or within the pistillar uh, transmission tissue. So we will talk about that uh, now.